Prime Minister did promise that we would have all the negotiations around the future trading relationship done by the time we get mm. to exit day, if um, Brexit happens. That's clearly not going to be the case, not least because to negotiate a trade deal usually with the EU, whether you're Britain or any other country, you're looking at around three years at least. Now, after we've left the European Union, we're due to be in this implementation or transition period, as it's referred to, which will go to the end of December 2020. Now, obviously, if you're looking at a three-year negotiation, it's going to go beyond that. So I, I think it's just a simple statement of the obvious. If we leave, inevitably, you're going to have to extend that transition period. But the problem in the House of Commons, quite frankly, is... I could do the Labour thing and say, this is all because you've got an incompetent government. I think it is incompetent. But the problem that she's got is that Brexit, in the form that it was sold to the British people, is simply undeliverable. You cannot do Brexit in the terms that people thought they were buying it. And that's the big problem here, which is why, I've, you know, I, I don't see how you resolve the impasse in the House of mm -hmm. Commons other than going back to the people when we actually know exactly what it is. Colonel Bob, what do you make of, you know, the possibility of extending the transition period? Because, again, there's this, you know, raise the spectre of having to pay even more money. David Liddington was talking about it, saying uh, an extension would cost Britain more than £10 billion in payments to the European Union. Yeah, that's the point. Personally, I don't see any point in extending you no know, backstop to the backstop or any further extension. Just get on with it. I mean, the, the Chuka and I were talking earlier, but I believe that the Prime Minister is in, a, in a, an impossible situation. There's, she's like a rabbit in the headlights. There's, where does she go? A no deal means on the 29th of March, we leave the European Union. There is no transitional period. There is no spending of £39 billion to actually give the European Union. There are some attractions to that, some attractions uh, on that. I want there to be a deal. I want there to be a deal. And I think there will be a deal, because in the end, these guys will run it right to the line. And the one thing about the British, we muddle through, we screw it up, but right in the end, we kind of get it right. And I really hope... I'm an optimist. The idea was that we're leaving the European Union. In those pamphlets put out by the government, it said clearly we're leaving the customs union, it said clearly we're leaving the, the single market. This was... People say, oh, we... No-one explained to us. Well, I seem to remember on television programmes like yours, um, politicians coming on saying, be, be aware that if we vote to leave the European Union, that means we leave the customs union, that means we're not in the single market. But, it was but, said, but, and it was in that pamphlet but, too, Chuck. The problem is, the pamphlet that was put out by the campaign that won the referendum, all their multiple pamphlets said, look, you leave the European Union, you'll get all the economic benefits of membership mm. once you've left, which is clearly not now going to happen. You'll see £350 million extra per week going into the NHS, which is not going to happen. In fact, we are seeing... EU citizen nurses and doctors leaving the NHS in their droves at a time when we have 100,000 vacancies for clinicians. Uh, and you can carry on. But, you know, without rehearsing all those arguments, the simple fact is the things that people thought they were going to get, they're not going to get. And, in fact, what they are going to be doing, we're going to, if we leave, be paying up, basically a divorce bill of £50 billion and we will not have got any trade deal or any guarantees about what the future will look like because it will be still mm. being negotiated after the point of departure in return. Now, most people, whether you so voted leave or... Anything. Well, most people, you know, whether you voted leave or remain, mm. will be thinking, hang on just a minute, you're paying all this money and you're getting nothing in return. Yeah. Now, you could adopt Bob's approach, which says, do you know what, just tell these Europeans to, you know, sing their hook and they're not going to get anything at all. Now, part of the problem you've got is a lot of that £50 billion pounds is partly settling our financial obligations to the European Union. So if you did what Bob says, well, we're just going to ignore those, who on earth is going to agree a trade deal with the UK knowing that they literally just be say, a compromise off, 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 you know, off you go, we're not going to meet our, our obligations? And actually, I mean, one thing that I think maybe Bob would agree with me on is I don't think there is a majority in the House of Commons for us to leave the European Union. And the problem is, with some of the more extreme people in Bob's party, is what they are trying to get the Prime Minister to adopt, which is a really harsh break, a complete separation mm. of our relations with the European Union, there isn't the parliamentary arithmetic to back that up either, which is why I, I think with the Prime Minister, I wonder why does she not face these people down? Because they'll huff and they'll puff, but they won't blow the house down. Because even if they blew the house down, got rid of her and, say, put in Jacob rees who often <laughs> comes on this programme, or yeah. Boris Johnson, I actually think those two guys will have less chance of getting the parliamentary arithmetic to work for them in the House of Commons. So, actually, there's realism 
But there's also a political realism that there needs to be I in her own party. And that's a very, very different situation. Because nobody agrees, do they, on what, what the version of Brexit is or what even the future looks like, how the details would work on all this? Well, frankly, I, I think Chucker and I are, are agreeing on to one other thing, too, that actually we've mucked up the negotiation. Um, I, I'm not sure that it should have been a politician that did the negotiations for, on our side. I would have thought a, a businessman... Who would have done it better, though? A sit, a, someone who actually is used to negotiating. Independent negotiators. A neg negotiator like Barnier, you know. Someone, someone like uh, of Barnier's ilk to, on our side. A European? No, British. You mean oh, those skills. Well, those you're skills. Saying. You want a negotiator mm. that goes in there. I mean... But do you think... have anyone in mind that could have done that job, though? Well, uh, um, no, I don't have someone in mind, but I'm... Bloody sure there'd be do. a lot of people like that in the city or, or elsewhere that could do it. I mean, someone like... I mean, you've been a businessman. You know how to negotiate. I negotiated for every day almost in Bosnia. The one thing you don't do is lay out your stall in front of your... You're the person you're negotiating. You don't say, we're going, to con we're going to concede on this, we're going to concede on this. What are you going to say? They say, no, we're not going to do anything. But one you of the actually, problems, though... And you have to, to be, be fair, clear on what you're going Bob, for. To be fair to the Prime Minister, one of the problems she faced was a lot of pressure from the opposition saying, what are you going mm. to do? We need to know what's being put on the table here. No one's telling us what's happening, no one's telling us what you're negotiating for. So actually, she had to be more transparent. And doesn't well, the country, well, have, well, a right, doesn't the country have a right she, to know she, the details? Well, as they well. do, but she I wouldn't have agreed. You can't do it all behind closed doors. But there was the public would want to know, wouldn't don't, they? You don't negotiate. You don't play poker and show your opponent so your hand. Then, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. This is this is slightly. It's not it a govern. normal business negotiation. It's not, is it? Well, it's not. There's two things. First of all, you can't ignore the fact that we are negotiating with 27 other countries in the EU bloc who have their own domestic politics. I mean, sometimes the debate here plays out like the only politics that mm. matters when you're trying to get an agreement is what's going on in the House of Commons, which is wrong. And secondly, the other big problem here is the government itself couldn't agree on what its position was. This is why this line, oh, they're bullying us, pushing us around. The Europeans are like, look, we just want to know what your position is mm. because you've got Boris Johnson, Michael Gove, Liam Fox saying one thing and then you've got Philip Hammond, David um, Gork and others in the Cabinet but saying the other. we also want and to know what a... their position is. But they... What's their position? Their position is... Actually, we're not, going to, we're not going to give you any deal. We, we want you to stay in no, the European no, 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 Union. No, no. We, you're, we're not going to give you anything. But that skilled negotiator you were yeah, talking about, right. mm. that's, that's what he, I'd have done. he did a map and he said, look, you can have a Canada-style trade deal or you can be in the single market and the customs union. Those are your options. Did he? Then yes, he did. But, uh, it's he online, wasn't there's clear. a map. Whereas I don't see any map having been provided by the Cabinet because the Cabinet can't agree. And this is why, look, this Saturday... Tens of thousands of people from all over the country are going to be marching on Parliament, demanding that they actually get a say on this thing. In particular, young people, over two million young people can now vote, who haven't been able to vote up to now, have had no say on this whatsoever, and this is going to affect them more than any other group. I had a group of young people um, from the youth group, Our Future, Our Choice, come and speak to me, and we were talking about Northern Ireland um, in the Green Room, all from Northern Ireland, where sentiment has really moved mm. on this because of the Irish border issue. And they say, look, we've got no voice in this whatsoever. We think it's time that you took this away from you lot all rowing in Westminster. We actually want to say, and that's what you're going to see, literally tens of thousands the of people... The majority of Northern, Northern, Northern Ireland London. voted to stay anyway, didn't they? they didn't no, want. well, it was, it was much more... Um, no, that wasn't actually the case, mm. but what has happened since um, is that it has moved very much in the direction of wanting Northern to Island keep the deal rubbish. that we have now. Well, I... Put, I mean, I'm, I've, I've, I've run a hard border I, in Northern Ireland you for have, two years. And I put, for two years I ran a hard border in Northern Ireland at Otla Cloy in, in South Tyrone. I actually ran a hard border with my soldiers. So they say, look, this border issue has all been talked up. It can all be resolved mm. with technology. If that's the case, and it can be resolved by technology, why are they so resistant to this backstop? Because if the technology works, you won't need to use the backstop. Well, I mean, I don't see why we need the backstop. Just get on with it. So you're I mean, you're we're, we're both in agreement, aren't you're, you? You're, you're we relaxed. want to get on with it. You're, you're, Everyone you're, wants you're, it done. You're relaxed. No, well, I'm, I'm, I'm relaxed because I, actually I, I think it will happen. I to go back to the people, but you, you, you are relaxed about the backstop because you think this technology is going to work. Yes, I do. So and more to the point, it's not just yeah. technology. It's the, it's the approach. It's the way you pre-register. It's, it's, it's more than that. It's, 
you have patrols, but not right on the border. You don't need cameras on the border. No one wants to. I mean, anyway, you can go across Northern Ireland, any way, place. It's a huge border. But, I mean, I. The problem, the problem will be, terrorists. though, and, and it you've will become been there. the EU border. You, uh, the problem yeah. will be as soon as you start stopping and checking vehicles, that can become a spot that could be focused on. Well, That's, you, and you've been in Northern Ireland. You understand how what, what sort of the worry is about creating any sort of border, any sort of position whereby goods are going to have to be checked and stopped. What and the French through. and the Germans and the Swiss do is they don't actually. They actually do some checking further in. But they're, they're all in yeah, the but customs. But that's just moving where the border they're is. Not, though, isn't well, they're not the, actually. The, they're the in French, Schengen, the but they're French, not in the customs union. The, the Swiss aren't. The, the, the French and the Germans are, are, but the Swiss aren't. And, and the Swiss are in a form of single market relationship but, I mean, with still the European a check. Union. Yes, that's that's how you get over it.